Ali, most fishing games are a nice, meditative, relaxing kind of affair. Sometimes a bit cutesy, like when they have mini games within other games. Dredge, on the other hand, is a horror fueled panic-driven, HP Lovecraft undertones manic fishing game. Yeah, so you... A lot of the time it is that first game you mentioned, like you'll, you'll go out on your boat and you'll catch fish and it'll just be like hauling in a load of cod and mackerel and have a lovely time yeah. and when the sun's high and the birds are, are circling, it's lovely. And then it gets dark or like you pull up a weird fish and then you go back to the village and everyone looks haggard and tired and just done. And that's where the Lovecraftian stuff starts to come in. It's not like a horrible tentacle Cthulhu driven version of Lovecraft, yeah. but it's that version of that kind of cosmic horror that is unsettling, gently like worrying yeah. rather than actually like straight up in your face, yeah. deliberate horror. But as I say, there is this version of this game that is, is lovely and you're just out there having a nice time catching fish yeah. and you, you pull in, you fill up your hold and you pull in and you sell it all off and you upgrade your boat and you do all of this stuff. The problem is when night sets and that's when like the panic starts to really become a feature of the game and something you have to, to learn to work around rather than it just being another fishing game. It's not yeah. like you just go out and, and have your day of fishing and come back and sell your catch. You have to learn to work with the day-night cycle and how that all kind of fits in. So when you say panic, is that a game mechanic or do you just mean like you panicking? Well, there's going, panic. Oh, no! <laughs> because there's definitely times when it'll do these very subtle things to just unsettle you. Like yeah. I say, it's not a game that's trying to jump scare you. It's a game that's trying to like get you on edge and, and be unhappy to yeah. a certain extent. But panic is an actual mechanic. The interesting thing, and I think the thing that I find most interesting about Dredge is that it's not it's not a game that kind of wants you to contend with the traditional ways of like measuring success. Like money is a factor because you need to upgrade your boat. Yeah. But and and health is it does yeah. this really interesting thing where your boat is expressed as a as a grid. You've got block by block, like exactly here. And as you catch a fish, you have to slot it into this grid system. Yeah. So you can see it here, it's a little quick time event. You pull in the fish. If you hit the, the green things here, you'll pull in the fish faster, which I'll come back to in a second. And then you have to slot it in and you can only slot in so many features. You can only slot in so many rods and so many engines and then so many fish. Oh, so your engine, oh, okay, cool. So here, your, your upgrades will also be here in between the fish. Yeah. So then all of a sudden it's, uh, that management side of it is uh, something we, the Tetris effect that we know. Yeah, so there's that. And then you can see at the top here, this, this damage thing this is basically a three strikes and you're out at this point. Yeah. But, so if you get hit by something, if you slam into a rock, you'll lose one of your damage things, but it'll also take out one of these points on this grid. Oh, so what? you'll just you'll open your inventory and it'll say there's just a little X over one of the things and you can't use that anymore until you go back and you fix it. And what that does is an interesting thing where like maybe it takes out your engine and you're basically just adrift because it, it'll be a completely random slot. <gasps> if it hits a slot with a fish in, the fish is lost. You, it goes Which over is unfortunate, but your engine. Unfortunate, especially when you catch like, a big fish. A bigger fish sells for more money but it also takes up more slots. So then if you take some damage, you lose that whole what, thing. So one slot can get rid of... One slot can kill an entire fish. As you upgrade the boat, it becomes less of a factor. But like here, you could just lose one of these fish, right? Like if, if one of these bottom slots gets hit, you lose a fish, that's that. All the time that you've invested into that is gone. So, so relatively traditional management mechanics that we're kind of used to, interesting ways of putting them in, but you said the twist on it is the panic and the time. Yeah, so... Time moves only when you are moving, and fishing counts as moving. And oh yeah, so up here you can see when you st stay still, it's not going up. Yeah. But then as soon as you fish, it'll move, or as soon as you move, as soon okay. as you move the boat. Okay, it'll interesting. Move. So that's a really interesting thing where you've only got so many hours in a day before the sun goes down, and when the sun goes down, different fish come out. So if you're looking for something specific, you might not be able to find it. But when the sun goes down, you start to panic, and it's expressed on the HUD by this like opening, all-seeing Big Brother-style eye that kind of as it gets worse and worse, flickers back and forwards. But on top of that, you start to see things in the dark that aren't there. Like one of the spookiest moments I ever had was you can see this boat trawling in the darkness, like out beyond the reef that you start in. And you're going, that's never been mentioned. Like what is going on there? And that's spooky and like you hear its foghorn and you answer its foghorn and then it answers back. But there's no evidence within the game that that is anything. And then the bit that gets me the most is that 
by the point at which this happened to me, I knew the two the reefs that you start in between these two little islands, and it's it's nicely penned in. I knew that inside and out. I yep. knew exactly where the rocks were. There's this whole um, lighthouse which is designed to be something that kind of pulls you back into this area the whole time. I knew exactly, I knew every moment of it. Yeah. But I came back one night panicked because I was getting back really late. And these rocks just start like appearing out of the mist where they've never been. They're just there to Oh, because it's a you. mist. You're like, I know that I'm going towards the lighthouse so I know this is a straight shot. And then the rock just appears out of yeah, nowhere. And you're and like, because you've, in the dark, you've only got these like, at the, spot, the start especially, you've only got these tiny bulbs that throw up a tiny amount of light, this, this really uh. small area around you that you can see. And so stuff just appears out of nowhere. And if you're panicked, you're just inventing it in your mind. But in, in the game, it's there. You clash into it and you'll damage yourself based on something you didn't even think is there. And there's a lot of other ways in which the panic sets in. Like one thing that's really spooky it does is you'll just hear this little like tinkle of piano keys. The sound design is incredible in that regard. Its ability to just unsettle, even in those moments, like I say, where you're sitting out on the open water and it's, it's lovely, you'll pull in this malformed fish, this something that's mutated. And the artwork on that is fantastic, but the sound design is incredible because it's just this little minor key that makes you feel like something's gone wrong. But with panic, you're more likely to get an infection in your fish and that tanks the value of them completely and you'll just see this little message that says like you see something slither into your hold and then you open your hold and your fish are horribly corrupted and that's just a, a mechanic of the, the panic system so panic is very much driven by being out at night and you can sleep to, to set it off and you can have lights on that make it more it, it makes it easier to kind of get over the panic and it, it ramps up slower but it means that time then becomes a really interesting resource because you have to be able to get out, get your catch and come home before the panic sets in, because otherwise you're not going to be as effective as you as you go on, because there are all these things that are going to damage you, going to slow you down, going to ruin your catch. And so there was this thing I, I would do, with, but I would wake myself up like five or 10 minutes early, just so I had those extra Oh, you have minutes. control over that. You can wake up, like the, the clock runs around, because like I say, you might want to go out and fish deliberately at night to catch a specific thing yeah. in this area. So. So you do have control of when you wake up. If you want to fish at night, you can. But you were yeah. purposely going, oh, I'm going to get 5, 5.30, 5.45. So that you get those extra few minutes because any panic you accrue in those 30 minutes before 6 a.m. and the sun rises is going to dissipate relatively quickly when the sun's up. But those extra 30 minutes of just this, this area immediately around this village, it takes a little while to get out of. There's no fish until you get to the mouth of this bay. And so you want to be like, well, I'm getting... I'm just getting shot of this so I can go and fish something more interesting. And as you start to push further afield, you've got your central island and then islands you can travel to around. And if you know you're trying to get over to that one, you need to leave early in the morning, at least before you start to get the big engine upgrades. And so it makes for such a fascinating mechanic where time and panic are so wedded to each other and things like money and health, which are far more traditional, yeah. they just start to be less important. Do they throw enough into the mix? in the mid game that kind of keeps that interesting? Or like, once you've got all these upgrades, are you just like king of the sea and nothing matters to you? Like, is it still interesting and hard? It's still interesting. I think it does lose some aspects of the, it, it does become less difficult, obviously. As you have your ability to, to get from island to island a lot more easily, that's the first big test, right? Is can I get my little boat from the starting island to the next island or to, to, these, to this reef over here and stuff like that? Once you are past that as a meaningful hurdle, the game does have to throw other things at you. The the upgrade mechanic is actually really interesting because it's it's almost presented as a tech tree, and you have to get specific resources in order to go through that tech tree. It's not really a case of money; it's a case of are you going to put your time aside to avoid fish and dredge up like wood and metal and cloth, which costs time. So dredging is as the name would suggest, like quite a key part of the game. But dredging is what you do to find those resources, those right, physical things okay. you're not selling on. You're very deliberately collecting so that you can upgrade your yep. boat. And they appear in very specific places. You have to go looking for shipwrecks in order to find... Which I'm guessing is a certain distance away. Again, and often in, time. in odd places. Like the shipwrecks traditionally are not hidden in the plain sight where the fish are. If I, there's a little, there's a cool little telescope mechanic that you can use and go, that's where I'm going to go because I want that specific fish. Yeah. Or even just, I need to find some fish, I'll use a telescope. Yeah. 
So you can look out for stuff and the fish are all kind of dotted around the open sea. You get to a certain point, you have to learn to adapt around it and particularly... And there are bigger beasties or there are bigger, there are bigger beasties, exactly. Yeah. Like uh, Island 3 does a particularly good job of making you adapt around what its big beastie is. You don't become king of the sea. That's you, reassuring at least. You have a lot more room to like get around and experiment and, and find the stuff that you want to look for. And there was one day that I was looking for a specific, they're called aberrations, the like horrid fish. Oh the, yeah. The weird ones that really throw it up and really sell the Lovecraftian stuff. I was looking for a specific one of those. And I was basically just doing donuts with a trawler net down yeah. looking, for, uh, looking for it. And in that situation, that's not difficult. I can manage the panic around that. And I was in a place that even at night wasn't too scary. Yeah. And then you can just go and sleep during the day and you kind of change things up. But I was still afraid of what of the big beastie. Like I was sitting in the shallows, that was fine. And you were doing figures of eight in one area because you're like, yeah, I, I know this not is safe. Into the like, I'm not going further anywhere. Yeah, okay, absolutely. cool, that's interesting. Well, I'm glad that they keep it fresh and they do mix it up. Um, it'll be interesting because this is just a preview. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what the later game is like, to see how that develops as well. Um, when's it out? It's out March 29th on all platforms, I think. So that's PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, PC, and Nintendo Switch. So all the way across the board. I really want to play this on Switch. It seems like a perfect really little game. Switch, yeah. to like, so how, how, how long did you play for? I played for a long time in the end. I don't have a, a direct okay. count, but easily like, I think, I think you could bash through the campaign in maybe eight to 10 hours if you really yeah, put your foot this down. This is what I mean, like it doesn't seem like a 30 to 40 hour no. game, but it's a nice Switch game of just like, just pootling around. And that's the thing, it can be really relaxing. There were moments where it it's is- It's not though, is it? It's so, it's It has so the cool. capacity to be really relaxing. It has this, you, you pootle around in the open sea under the under the, like this massive open sky and it's really nice and you can just go fishing and it's not, and you, you can push the horror, as it were, as much as you want. Well, you can push it out of your mind for a bit. For a bit. <laughs> You'll, it'll always come back and get you in some capacity, even if that's just getting back or racing the, the sunset to get back, because you know that it's just going to be less pleasant. You know that you are going to lose that, and you're always sitting there, even when it's really delightful, going, I have to bear in mind what time it is, and I have to, like, can I fish for one more thing <laughs> before the sun goes down? And it's always there, and you're always balancing it, but, like, maybe 11 a.m. on the uh, on the internal clock, yeah. on the game clock, that's the best time to be out, but... As if management games weren't, like the whole point of management games is to like have you juggling stuff and that tension and stuff. And then this just adds an extra notch on yeah. top of it. No. I'm so interested. I really want to play this. It's going to be very good. Thanks for playing it. Let us know about it. And yeah, um, can't wait to play the full game when it finally comes out. Yeah.